Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. As many of you know, LinkedIn asked me to pilot a new feature called Series. I think I'm actually one of 100 people testing this feature in the world that actually allows you to create a series of articles. Inspired by a former guest, who we will talk about more in just a moment, I decided to call my series Digital Transformation Stories and feature a written article with a podcast and maybe even a video. Essentially, I want to put all these conversations about people that are making a big difference into a series, but also bring these written articles to life by adding audio and video. And a few moments ago when I said a previous guest inspired me here, that's because seven months ago I spoke to Taryn Southern, who had nearly half a million YouTube subscribers and her videos have received more than 700 million views online. But she now calls herself a recovering YouTube vlogger and more of an artist and digital storyteller that has turned to artificial intelligence to create her new album called I Am. And what makes this project completely unique is the entire album was composed with the help of AI. The music videos that accompany the singles leverage AR, VR and 360 video technology too. And Taryn also created a new system that enables hundreds of people to collaborate on a song and split the proceeds and royalty payments all using Ethereum smart contracts. How cool is that? So obviously I am going to feature her on my digital transformation series on LinkedIn, so make sure you subscribe to that. But I also thought it would be great to catch up with her today and see what she's been up to. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to New York City so we can speak with Taryn Southern. And trust me when I say you're going to absolutely love this. So a massive warm welcome back to the show, Taryn. Can you refresh the listener's memory with a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Sure, Neil. Thanks for having me back. My name is Taryn Southern, and I'm an artist and a technologist, and as I like to say, a recovering YouTuber. <laughs> I spent about 10 years making a lot of video content on YouTube and other social media platforms, and working as a TV and film producer and writer, and just over the last couple of years, I've started transitioning more into VR, AR, using blockchain, using AI, all of these new mediums to create and tell stories. Wow, it's exhausting you just saying it there, man. You're so busy and aware of so many different hats. <laughs> <laughs> but the last time we spoke, you really inspired me with how you transform the entire creative process from start to finish using artificial intelligence, augmented reality, VR, blockchain and 360 video technology. But for anyone uh, tuning in for the first time and hearing about you, can you just bring them up to speed with what you've been doing and what we spoke about last time? Sure. So I think the last time we spoke, I was busy working on a new VR series for YouTube. Yeah. I had received a grant from them to do an experimental series about the future, and that's really what led me into my most recent project was the release of this album in which I used artificial intelligence to compose and produce all of the instrumentation of the, of the songs. Um, and that, that began really out of, uh, that was born out of this YouTube VR series and then ended up becoming its own own project. So uh, I just released that album. It's called I Am AI three weeks ago. And uh, I'm very excited about it. It took me an entire year to create. Um, so suffice it to say, while AI certainly can enable a lot of people to make music, it doesn't necessarily make the process easier. That was my predominant project over the last year, as well as directing a film on the future of man and machine. Something that I noticed, well, that came up on my newsfeed a few weeks ago was the release of New World, which I believe is the first ever tokenized collaborative song experiment using blockchain technology, which is incredibly exciting, incredibly cool straight, straight away there. So what's the story behind this and what made you want to do it? Thank you. Yeah, I'm, New World is the first single to release off of the album. I've released three other AI singles prior to releasing the album, and then New World is, is like technically the fourth single I've released. But New World I composed using a synthesis of Amper and Google Magenta AI. And I thought because it's a song representing the blockchain generation and all of the exciting things that will inevitably come out of this new technology, we thought, why not tokenize it? So I, um, I tokenized the song as a as like a free offering to the Ethereum community. So anyone with an Ethereum smart wallet address could sign up 
and basically own a portion of the song. And by owning a portion of the song, that also gave them access to collaborate in the writing of the song. So we had 299 people sign up for a token. So 299 people technically own the song asset and will receive royalties from its streaming and sales. And of those 299 people, I'd say about 50 or 60 actively collaborated in the writing of the lyrics and the choices around the musication using the AI software. Beast. So it was a big, large experiment in creative <laughs> <You're> <laughs> collaboration. Kidding. And also what happens when you, when you incentivize um, people to collaborate in new ways. So it was really fun. Um, and I'm excited to see how other artists might, might incorporate this technology, especially big artists who currently rely on label systems in order to finance their albums. It's possible that now these new avenues um, could result in, in new financing and incentive structures. Now, a question I've got to ask you is if anybody speaks to an artist, they usually ask them, do you write the melody or the lyrics first? Like you've already, I wanted to just double check with you. When you wrote New World, did you know that this was the road you were going to take it down or did this happen later? Oh, man. Yeah, we started, we actually did know. That with New World, we started with the lyrics. Yeah. We, wanted, we, wanted the, we wanted to make a blockchain anthem. That was always the intention. So we thought, let's make the, the lyrics and then we'll build the music around it, which was actually very difficult. So with all the other AI songs on my album, I started with the music and I let the music infer my creative process of writing the lyrics. So the lyrics really were conjured from the feelings I got from listening to the song. Um, so that made New World inherently tricky <laughs> but but it, but it all came together and i believe 240 participants signed up for the song tokens with the trust token using their public ethereum address so i think i'm right in saying this that these tokens allow them to contribute to the lyric writing process like you said a few moments ago but can you just tell me a little bit more about how the whole process works it's uh it's not a process i've streamlined i'll say <laughs> <laughs> so i'm hoping the next person that does it can can uh, work out the the kinks but uh, actually, it was 299 people who signed up their Ethereum wallet address, but 240 of which who provided me their email address. Because, of course, there were probably some people in there that were big blockchain enthusiasts and did not want any sort of uh, any sort of uh, association that might reveal who they are, which is which is kind of part of the fun part. Um, and then so of the 240 people that provided an email address, I would say about 90 or so signed up to be part of our collaboration process, so to speak, which we did through Slack. And there were contributions from about 50 or 60 of those individuals in the writing of the lyrics, in supplying uh, recording material. We had, we had multiple voices from our participants, people from Eastern Europe, from South America, sending in vocal recordings that were included in the track. In terms of the actual blockchain technology, if you had a public Ethereum wallet address, you would submit that address to the uh, uh, to the company that was basically powering this experiment to happen, which was Trust Token. And Trust Token essentially enables anyone to take an asset, a physical asset in the real world, and convert it into a trust system, which is set up using our real world US trust system, allowing money to flow through the trust and into Trust Token, which then divvies it up as, uh, as Ethereum, converts it into Ethereum and then can divvy that up to endless numbers of people. Um, we put a cap on ours <laughs> just so that just so that people would actually see more than a cent <laughs> in royalties hit their Ethereum wallet. But it also allows people to actually see where these royalties come from, how frequently they arrive, and really what it, what it, like see from from the other side what the process is like for a musician uh, and, and have this sort of transparent look inside what it takes to be an artist and make a living. And uh, I think think they'll see it's pretty challenging <laughs> when they start getting their royalty payments but that's essentially how it was set up and i believe one of the token holders was professional hip-hop artist jensen reed and he raps on the track too so how did you get him involved did he just get it straight away yeah he i mean there were a number of musicians that actually signed up who um for the token yeah. who were very very active in blockchain already and excited to see how this technology could impact their art and so they were just all really amped about being part of this experiment and Jensen I've actually worked with Jensen in the past so that was that was just an easy phone call I said hey man you know we had an awesome one of our token holders wrote this awesome rap so you want to <laughs> you want to get in the studio and he was he was excited 
So when we talk about any kind of song sales, song stream, sync or TV or movies that can run through this trust, what kind of feedback have you received from that? I think a lot of artists are really excited about how blockchain technology will help transform the industry. Um, the music industry particularly, it's it's archaic, it's really messy, it's hard to get paid, it's hard to know when payments are coming in and if they'll come in. There are so many different regist- music registration companies out there. International music is a, is a disaster. If you're trying to get paid, it's really, really hard. And so I think these kinds of technologies will not only shine a light on the problems in the current system, but provide artists with unique solutions. So I saw the most amount of excitement and feedback from other artists who just wanted to see how this experiment worked. Um, I think it's also an exciting sort of use case of blockchain technology to the rest of uh, the blockchain community. Right now, there's a lot of focus on cryptocurrency and making a quick buck. Um, There's also a lot of focus from the engineering side on rebuilding systems to create new kinds of platforms for people. And so I think just being able to um, do a project that's centered around a creative asset rather than a real world monetary asset starts to get people's creative juices flowing about really where this technology could go and how it could be applied in, in, in new ways to help to help both artists and their fans and music aficionados. I'm curious as well, you set out to create an anthem for the blockchain generation, which is incredibly cool, but as an artist, what was your inspiration behind doing that? I've been so excited about everything happening in the blockchain space for the, for at least a few years now. I think it was 2013 where I where I first learned, uh, 2012 or 2013, where I first learned about blockchain and and became interested in it. Um, I think it's just one of those things where we'll, we'll we'll probably see for the next decade or so a back and forth of, of people figuring out how to how to build this technology better, how to implement it, how to how to adopt it. It'll take some time, but I think it will transform absolutely everything in the same way that the internet transformed everything we do today. So um, for me, it was an easy, since I was writing an album about the future, it was hard to imagine not having a song that that somehow um, explored the possibilities behind blockchain in a in a hopefully not too on the nose way. <laughs> <laughs> now, I am conscious we've got people listening in 165 countries to us talk here, and there's going to be a lot of creative, amazing, yeah, which is amazing on its own. <laughs> the fact that we're having a conversation here and it's going to be beamed all around the world, and people could be walking their dog in a gym or anywhere, or just a train to work. But there are going to be a lot of creative people listening. They're going to be inspired by what you're doing here. Mm-hmm. And I know you did say you've not streamlined the process, but can you talk me through the creative process for New World and also a, a quick recap on how you completed the album? Because I think your story really could inspire so many people and maybe a future collaborator with you as well could be listening. Oh, thank you so much, Neil. Well, I suppose my um, my takeaway from this whole process of making both the album and New World and employing all these technologies into my creative process is that there are ways to eliminate or at least assist artists in uh, reducing the barriers to entry or the challenges they face in, in making art. Art is not easy. Like anyone who's ever been uh, a creative knows that it is a process more, <laughs> more than a, uh, a single act, a single spurt of creativity. And that process can at times be so arduous that it actually keeps the artist from creating or it keeps the artist from being able to make money. Um, There are just so many steps. And so my, my sort of goal in all of this was to figure out what are the steps that are keeping me, that are preventing me from actually making art and how can I eliminate those steps or how can I improve upon those steps? And so for me as a songwriter, and as a lyricist and as a vocalist, being able to produce music always required a lot of heavy lifting. Um, I had to find music producers. Sometimes they were expensive. Sometimes they were wonderful in transforming my vision. And sometimes they were not so wonderful in transforming my vision. Either way, it was a, it was a part of the process that tended to get me stuck um, and tended to keep songs that I was writing from actually being released. So by working with AI, I was able to actually 
have this collaborative process that could be done with just me and my computer, which meant that I could actually um, I could actually ship music to the world without being held up on these other areas. And same with the blockchain song, right? Like being able to introduce this new technology allowed me to inject new energy in the collaboration process and a whole group of people who are now motivated to help get this song out there, get it get it heard, and um, and sort of help reimagine what uh, what the process of, of making art and re- distributing it might look like in the future. So to me, this isn't about necessarily taking away any any certain part of the process from anyone. Everyone's got their own unique process and everyone has their own unique challenges, but it's about using technology to help the individual in the areas that they need it most. So this is simply how I used the technology to help me, but I think each person has their own individual challenges and and they would be able to apply this to the areas that they most need help with. That's what makes it so cool for me, because you've transformed the entire creative process using AI, uh, AR, VR, blockchain, and 360 video technology, but it's your creative process, and you've made it your own. But I've got to ask, I mean, where do you go from here? What's next? How are you going to tackle that difficult second (laughs) album? (laughs) Oh, man. I mean, I think I need a vacation first, but... (laughs) I, right now, right now, I'm honestly, I'm, I'm finishing up this documentary film. Um, I'm very excited about that. I'm hoping that, that this film will sort of encapsulate a lot of the ideas that I'm talking about, but in a very different way. And that will probably be complete by early next year. And then, uh, and then I'll probably will make a second album. I think the technology and AI is just going to become more and more interesting and, and have more applications. So I'd, I'd like to continue um, experimenting with it and seeing where it goes. But um, I don't know. I, I I have a vision, Neil, about touring the world with a band of robots. Oh, so man. we'll see <laughs> what happens. If anyone out there is a roboticist and finds this to be a fun and interesting idea, feel free to contact me. <laughs> Talk about set the bar high. You don't make life easy for yourself, do you? I know. I know. This is what happens. Well, I'll pre-book when a ticket just... for that tour. You can count on that one. <laughs> can't help myself. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, the last time we spoke, you did mention the film that uh, you were working on. I think it's coming on Netflix. Is that right? Uh, no, it's it's an independent film. I hope it goes to Netflix. That would cool. be amazing. So keep your fingers crossed. Cool. Can you just tell me a little <laughs> bit more about that, just for anybody that missed our last conversation? Because I think that was a fantastic idea too. Sure. Yes. The film is called I Am Human, and it tells the future story of man and machine as told through the eyes or through the lens of several real-life cyborgs that currently exist so very excited to tell their stories so i've got to ask i mean you seem incredibly busy what do you do to unwind i love to travel and hike and eat good food i'm also uh, never one to turn down a good glass of wine cool. do you put the tech <laughs> down when you go traveling or do you use it to enhance your travel experience? yes i actually i did a little weekend getaway with my boyfriend last weekend and we had a no screens allowed policy for two full days oh man. how did that go because it's hard isn't it so no phone it went it went well we actually had a moment where we had to drive somewhere and we realized it's it's uh tricky to go anywhere these days without google maps yeah. but we did it wow we got there by just <laughs> using pure instinct <laughs> <laughs> well if we do have any creatives or anyone wants to finance your world tour with robots and they want to get in touch with you what's the best way they can find you online check out your album your work or maybe just uh contact you if you've got any questions Absolutely. They can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. My account is the same across all of those mediums. It's just my name, Taryn Southern, T-A-R-Y-N, Southern, like Southern California. Fantastic. Well, a huge thanks. I know you're incredibly busy, so a huge thank you for taking the time to come and join me again. Uh, Well, let's get you back on in another six months when this film's coming out, and we'll uh, see where life takes you in 2019. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. New World is the first ever tokenized collaborative song experiment using blockchain technology. And again, how cool is that? Having 240 participants signed up for song tokens using the trust token and using their public Ethereum address. And essentially, like she said there, these tokens allowed them to contribute to the lyric writing process, which around 75 people in the end did, and ended up sharing in any royalties from the track's digital sales and streams. And royalties are automatically then paid out via Ethereum's smart contract. But hearing how one of those token holders was professional hip-hop artist Jensen Reed, and he raps on the track, is pretty cool too. But more than anything, I just love how Taryn is constantly pushing the envelope here and experimenting with new technology to create something new and something exciting. 
So what are your thoughts about Taryn and her token holders creating a trust entity where the trust will automatically divvy up royalty payments through Ether? Do you love the idea that any kind of song sale, song stream, sync for TV or movie could actually be run through this trust? Everything I've heard today sounds fantastic, but I want to throw it out to you and hear your viewpoint on that creative process and throwing technology into it, because it will be different for each and every person. So email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com, tweet me at Neil C. Hughes, or pop by my website, techblogwriter.co.uk slash podcast, if you'd like to leave me a virtual voicemail. So I wish Tarin all the best with this song anthem for a blockchain generation. And I thank you all for tuning in and listening to this show again today. But don't worry, I won't make you wait too long. I'll be back bright and early with another episode tomorrow, wherever you are in the world. So thanks for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.